to another episode of Inside Access Control. I'm excited today to have Paul DePezo, the Executive Vice President of Phoenix. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? I'm great, Lee. How are you today? Good. I appreciate you taking the time. I know things are busy, um, so I appreciate you making time to have just a quick conversation. wanted to just check in, see how Phoenix is doing, um, and uh, see how your business is doing, and then also just have, get the information out to the dealer base and, and customers uh, that are, are interested in you and your product. Okay, terrific. Well, thank, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. Um, you know, this is a great topic for, for both of us because bo it's both near and dear to our hearts as a general rule of thumb, uh, you know, the whole access control space and how it's evolving in, in the security industry. But, uh, you know, the question of, you know, how's Phoenix doing? You know, fantastic. We, we've just uh, passed uh, our six year mark. We're, we're having, we were on pace of having our best year ever already coming out of the gate. Actually, March was probably our best month of all time. We're really fortunate and blessed to have some fantastic resellers. We've got a great team of, of people within our, within our business, our engineers engineers, our salespeople, our support people. It's a terrific makeup of, of the right people. I feel like we're in the right spot at the right time. And again, we're, we're gaining traction at, at the end user level consultants. Okay. Our base of resellers is that we're probably sitting at about 260 resellers now globally. Can you just give a quick uh, sort of background on, on who you are and what, what you all do? Um, so Phoenix was, was a uh, a product, really a product initially that was born from, from a system integrator uh, while I was at Linnell. And at that time I was uh, running North American. I had a chance to meet this gentleman, uh, Sam Shallaby, and he owned and operated a company called FSC out of Ottawa. Sam was, uh, it was a very early adopter of access control uh, on the Linnell side and one of the originals, if I remember correctly, from back in the mid nineties. And he was one that, that saw where things were going. It was a very much a, uh, Sam took on a different approach as an integrator. He didn't like to carry a lot of lines. So he was very focused on one, but he saw where things were going and he really would have liked to have seen on guard in his mind kind of evolve into what we're doing here um, because we couldn't do it at the time. We really decided to, to, to venture out and find somebody that could potentially build this. And, and honestly, he just built it for his own internal purpose, his own inter internal customer base, didn't really have a, an intention of taking it to the market. One day, Convergent came along in the beginning of their buying spree uh, when they really started to expand back in uh, 20, 2012 and uh, made him an offer and he, he took the opportunity to get out of the integration side and, and looked at this at this piece that he had and, and really thought it was something worth taking the market after getting some feedback from, a, from a numerous other people, other integrators and some, some other business people. And uh, that's kind of when he and I joined forces and had the opportunity to, uh, to kick this thing off back in 2014. And, and here we are today, one of Mercury's top resellers in a short amount of time. And we're excited about the direction of, of the industry and where we're going. With that, uh, and we've talked about phase changes and the things that are happening. You're on the forefront of cloud as you've been and with the, the impact of what's going on currently right now, the fortunate side of the makeup of how your organization is that allows uh, the flexibility. Can you speak a little bit to the really it's business continuity is, is a lot of what, what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah, that's Those are the two words that are coming up consistently now um, over the last uh, 30 days or so is the whole business continuity plan. Uh, first of all, how, it, how it's impacted us has been essentially, uh, in a way, non-existent. It hasn't really impacted us a whole, uh, very negatively. Uh, while we had engineers in Ottawa and our staff was there, we still have people there that are shipping product out, but for the most part, our engineers are still sitting behind um, a desktop or a laptop and they're still designing, they're still working on the UI, still working on the back part of the platform. Salespeople are still out in the field, but what we found is, you know, the nature of our product offering, sitting in AWS, you know, sitting in those services that are deployed across uh, multiple data centers allows us to really support our, our, our reseller channel because now they take advantage of those services. They don't have to worry about uh, getting out there uh, to, to service their customers in an on-premise mode because they're going through exactly the same pain right now. You would go to a traditional integrator office and you know, you're gonna have 80% of, uh, of the infrastructure there every day, even if it is just as a check-in and then go back out on the field, uh, service techs come in, get their supplies, move back out. You know, they've had to be, become very virtual. And the end users, what, what we're seeing is falling directly into what we're doing in one of our presentation series tomorrow, which is a, uh, an interactive discussion about this whole virtualization that's going on in based upon COVID-19 and how it's forcing us to adapt all of our businesses. I've spoken to a couple of my integrators this morning and, and what they're saying is, this is not a big deal to us because we made a decision many years ago that we needed to be prepared 
prepared for something like this. So their business continuity plan was already in place when something like this hit. Our, birth, our business continuity plan was already in place. So we already knew if we ever had to go virtual, we were already prepared to do that. Um, we're all working on the product in, in the QA development side, production side, already sitting virtually in, in an AWS environment. Because of that, we can continue to move forward. We can continue to uh, service our customers. And then our customers, uh, our resellers can continue to uh, service their customers. Matter of fact, one of my resellers this morning told me, he said they've seen a boom in their business because what they're doing is not only were they hosting a lot of their customers with uh, utilizing our platform before, but what they're seeing is that their customers are calling up and saying, we have way too much going on. We have, we have a lot of infrastructure things we need to take care of. Can you just take over the whole entire access control platform and manage it for us? And their answer is absolutely, we can do it today. And with a flip of a switch, they're making that happen. What's interesting is uh, I had a conversation like this with John Mack from Imperial Capital and he mentioned one of the things that he thinks the phase change that's going to come out of this is a recognition of uh, more managed services. Uh, these types of systems that have the architecture uh, to support that are, are definitely, in my opinion, and I know yours and a lot of people, sort of the the it, the future sort of now uh, on on needing to do that, and it's never been heightened more than with the current climate that we yeah, have. No doubt, and and you and I both been in this industry long enough, and we've seen the advent of how it's how it's evolved. And, uh, and, and it's like anything else. If a product offering doesn't evolve, it eventually dies and goes to the wayside. And I think it's got to be the same with the reseller market and, and how they evolve. And it's actually to their advantage. They have an opportunity now to, to create. It's not just about recurring, recurring services. It's really about helping the end user in, in an environment they, they just really, they don't have the ability. The products are becoming much more intense. They have uh, just an incredible, robust uh, capability to them. We're very enterprise in nature. Functionality we offer within a cloud is something I never saw 20 years ago in any product offering. And again, it's just the ability to develop these capabilities. So now when you get all this functionality in the engine, sometimes it's a little bit too, too much horsepower for the end user to be able to manage because it's going to cost them time, money, resources. Right. Uh, there's there's a, a traditional, as we've seen, that somebody that typically would manage these systems, there's a high level of turnover. So then, then you've got to retrain that person over again. Meanwhile, the integrator who's doing this on an everyday basis knows these systems inside and out. They know how they can help the end user, how they can run a report um, very quickly for them, how they can actually watch for specific areas of the building uh, and and it again it's it's adding it's actually putting the value back in value added reseller two last things and i'll let you go any um, message you want to get out to your dealer channel and customer base that you currently have now and then the second part would be is uh is there anything that you need as an organization you know you're looking for more dealers whatever it might be well the first thing i'm looking forward to when this is over is a haircut because uh, yeah, i'm with you <laughs> speaking of service providers none of us can get to one right now so I'm, that's uh, i'm with you <laughs> i think first of all um, the one thing I want to definitely say to my reseller channel is uh, is thank you, right? And we appreciate those early adopters. We appreciate those that have, that, that saw how this is going to go, this this evolution. We appreciate them uh, making a choice to go to Phoenix. We were a young company. We did we, uh, we did zero advertising. Nobody knew who we were, and they took a chance based upon what they saw as both the product offering and the support that we were going to give them. Um, and they've stayed with us, so we we do appreciate that. And now that that channel has grown to the point that yeah. I feel like we've got a better reach. First of all, we always want to be humbled by that because. Because I, I never want to be in a position where I feel like that it's happen. us. It's all about us. It never is. There's nothing you do in life that's about just you. You may create the, better, the best widget in the world, but you know there's always somebody else there on the other side that has to support it or purchase it or in, in engage in this thing. So we're very grateful for that. The rest of the message is if, if you've, uh, I would tell you one of the things we've really evaluated, we've noticed, and, and I don't have exact data on this, Lee, but one of the interesting things you talked about it earlier, um, initially we were really much a, a hosted service opportunity. Um, we never do managed services because we as, a, as an organization don't offer that, but it was always there for our resellers. And we, in the beginning, we probably saw three or 4% taking advantage of that. We are now in, the, in, the, in an area and based upon just conversations I've had with my resellers, I can now see it. It's probably eclipsed 30, 35% now of our resellers that are actually engaged in managed services. It's, it's helped their bottom line. It's helped them get through tough times like this. And finally, the last message I want to say is um, we, we want to stay open and open, not just from a product standpoint, but uh, uh, open from, from listening. I, I, again, having been in this industry for a long time, I see companies that reach this level that they go, you know, we built this, we did this themselves. We're going to do whatever we want internally. We never want to stop listening to um, those that have really important feedback and ideas that can help us and them and their customer grow. Because if we don't have, a, if none of us have customers, then 
it doesn't really matter. And I appreciate you. Uh, you know, you and I, we met before, but then through this, after writing something about, about Phoenix, um, that you could have taken uh, either, you had two ways to take it, either get, get angry at me or, or, or open up to it to have a discussion. And, and I, I appreciate the fact of how open you were to have the conversation. And it just shows me the sort of the testament to how you manage the business and how you probably take care of your customers and do the rest. So kudos to you for doing that. And I appreciate you being open to that. So thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. And, and again, I think, I think your voice means a lot. I, you know, there are other companies out there, you know, whether it's the media, whether it's an IPVM, I, I think they're all important. I think it's a great checks and balances for everything we're doing. And again, it, it helps us not to be completely uh, reliant upon ourselves, but to be open to, I don't know everything. It's one thing I told you last time. I, there's no way. I don't care if you've got a hundred years in this industry, you're not going to know everything. So I think it's important to be open to other ideas forever at any point. Well, I appreciate that. So what's the best way if people want to get a hold of you or find out more information? Sure. Absolutely. I mean, obviously our website is, uh, uh, is www.phoenix.com and then uh, but secondly they're they're always welcome to reach out to me you know which is paul.tepezo at phoenix.com or uh, they call the headquarters number which is on the website and or they're you know always uh, able to reach out to me through LinkedIn or any other avenue or call my cell phone I'm wonderful well I appreciate the time uh, stay healthy the best to your family too who's on the front lines dealing with this and uh, thank you for everything thanks Lee I appreciate the time Have a great day.